Okay, I want to talk a little bit about anger and the victim mindset. So when we refer to anger, first of all, many people, if not most people, look at anger as something that is inherently negative. Anger in and of itself is not negative. Anger is a natural human emotion like any other emotion, such as happiness and sadness or any other emotion. It's just natural. Now, what we choose to do with the anger can be negative when we choose to act out aggressively. But that's not really my topic today. My topic today is the victim mindset. And what I mean by the victim mindset, I mean the message that we are given in the media nowadays, as well as uh, the message that many of us have chose to internalize as to why we are not succeeding in life. So number one, I remember uh, growing up, you know, as a youngster, uh, one of the things that we would hear all the time as a youngster would hear it like sometimes from older folks and different people. And, you know, we kind of grew up saying it as well was a uh, statement similar to, uh, you know, the man trying to keep us down, the man trying to hold us back. Uh, the man won't let us get ahead. Um, we would look at, you know, certain groups of people and, and, uh, talk about how much easier, uh, things are for them, uh, as opposed to us. Now, this line of thinking naturally is going to have us feeling, uh, not okay, right? or angry if we feel that someone is intentionally going out of their way to cause us harm or to prevent us from succeeding in life. So, I mean, in that circumstance, why would you not become angry? And a lot of the message that we see in the media, or at least the way that I interpret the message that I see in the media is that those of us who are not successful, especially if you happen to be uh, a minority member or one of the so-called disenfranchised groups, um, the reason that you're not successful is based on uh, things such as systemic racism, uh, your socioeconomic status, uh, the condition of your neighborhoods. Um, the schools that, um, you have access to, um, you don't have access to enough money and resources in order to educate yourself as well as, uh, let's say someone in a, in a rich neighborhood, um, all of these different things. Now, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I believe that these ideas and these messages cause more harm than good. And uh, the reason I believe that is this. I believe that you or we are stronger than that. We're stronger than any outside force uh, that would want us to not be successful. We can make decisions however we want, we can do uh, pretty much whatever we choose. Now, will your plight or your um, activities be a little more difficult for you than for some other people? In some cases, yes, it will be. Now, is this, is this difficulty or can this difficulty uh, be associated with things such as uh, systemic racism or other things that people say as to why we're not successful. Sometimes they can. However, difficult is not the same as impossible, right? So if someone makes uh, something difficult for you, it doesn't mean that you can't do it. And I've learned and unfortunately, the hard way <laughs> that when you struggle through to learn things or things are more difficult for you to learn, when you get it, 
when you put the effort in to understand it, you're actually better and more prepared than people who it came easy to. Because those people won't know what to do if a problem occurs. So, you know, even an example, even if you were, let's say, uh, doing something or installing a new stereo in your car and everything went exactly according to the instructions in the booklet and you put it all in and everything is working. Cool. Now you know how to install a stereo. The problem is that if anything goes wrong with that stereo, uh, a fuse blows or, you know, a, a wire gets ca uh, crossed or uh, maybe there's a short in the wire or something like that. You have no idea what to do. Now, obviously, you can research it and eventually you, you can figure out the problem, but you don't know where to go to. Whereas when someone, let's say, is installing a stereo and there's a problem, again, maybe the, from the beginning, there's a short in the wire or they cross the wires the wrong way. Then they have to go through the process of figuring out, OK, what went wrong and why is this thing not working the way that I would like it to? And then they're able to figure that out. So now not only do this individual know how to install uh, the stereo, they can also work out problems or maybe a friend or associate might tell them, you know, a particular issue that's going on with their car, with their stereo. And they're able to come up with some ideas as to where this person can start to resolve their problem. Whereas the person that just installed it very easily, they cannot. Right. And for those of us who have had a, a harder time in life, right, we're generally able to deal with more difficult situations than other people are that, that have had maybe an easy life, let's say. And I'll say for myself, because uh, I think it's necessary that I say this, that um, I've not always been a good citizen. Right. Uh, matter of fact, most of my life, I, I uh, you know, was on the wrong side of the law. Uh, or. On the wrong side of the law or paying for consequences due to my activities from the. Uh, being on the wrong side of the law and pretty much all of my difficulties and problems that I've had in life. And I know this is not the case for everyone that I've had in life were a direct result of decisions that I made in my life. Right. It wasn't due to systemic racism. It wasn't due to my socioeconomic status. It wasn't due to the family uh, that I was brought up in. It wasn't due to the community I lived in nor was it due to um, the educational system, public educational system. None of these uh, things uh, would explain um, how I chose to live my life. Now, what would explain it is what I just said. I chose to live my life in a certain way, and I therefore had to pay certain consequences for the decisions that I made. And I paid those consequences. And I made some changes in the process. The biggest change that I made and the most beneficial change that I made was in my mindset. And my change didn't come about as far as my change in my mindset. It didn't come about through any ideas that someone told me that I should think a certain way um, or according to any particular, let's say, uh, political party ideology. Um, to be quite honest, um, I don't agree with any of the parties in whole. There are some there are some things or issues or initiatives from all the parties that I can say, you know, this thing is good or that thing is bad. But I don't agree in whole. Uh nor do I identify with any particular uh political party. Um, you know, however, um, I find that liberal politics in general, right, while I think some of it is well-meaning, I think it's a problem for us 
uh, as a community. And by us, I mean us as citizens of this country in general, but uh, minority members in particular. Right. And the reason why I say minority members in particular, because, um, you know, as far as I can see, uh, a lot of the minorities happen to be or subscribe to those particular politics and the message that are uh, sent through those politics. And I and I can see it as a problem. Right. So. Number one. Right. We have opportunities, right, to educate ourselves and pretty much go to just about any school we want to, right? There are uh, financial assistance in place to help you to pay for an education if you choose to get an education. I didn't uh, start even attempting to educate myself until I was incarcerated in prison and serving a life sentence. That's when I chose to begin uh, educating myself. Uh, before that, you know, when I would go to school, I would only go to school to mess up. I would only go to school to to uh, cause problems. Right. I never put in uh, an effort an honest effort in trying to educate myself. And then at the age of 17, I end up getting a life sentence in prison. Uh, well, at least I caught the case at that time. And that case led up to me getting a life sentence in prison and being sentenced to 21 years to life in prison for attempted murder on a police officer and second degree murder. Second degree murder was uh, 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 an officer killed my uh, crime in that case. And even with that, uh, with that situation, you know, um, I had a lot of this victim mentality in my mind, uh, even about that situation. Right. Uh, my thing was the police and, uh, you know, how they killed my friend and, uh, the fact that I was serving a life sentence for actions of a police officer. Right. That's how I looked at it at the time. However, when I really looked at the situation, um, it was my actions. Right. I chose to. So in the situation of my my situation, of my case, there were four individuals originally on the scene uh, of my crime. And two of the individuals uh, after the police came and told us we can leave except for my crime who got killed. Um, two of the individuals chose to walk away and walked off and got out of, and left the scene of the situation. My um, friend attacked the police. He, he punched him in the face and they started fighting. I went to the car and got a sawed off shotgun and was going to kill the police. Um, from my vantage point, I only had an opportunity to fire a shot to try to draw his gunfire towards me in order to prevent my friend from being killed. Uh, and then I reloaded the gun. Uh, by the time I reloaded the gun, another officer was on the scene and behind me. And uh, I was taken into custody at that point. So in my mind at that time, I was in prison for something uh, that the cop did. Right. Because my friend, he was shot three times and he was killed. Uh, however. Uh, this police officer was in. Uh, pretty much a fight for his life. Right. And uh, and it was only later, years later, uh, that I really looked at my situation of being incarcerated and being in there for so long. I ended up uh, uh, serving. Uh, 21 years in prison. Uh, uh, and I end up, you know, just looking at, at my situation and, and, and why I was in prison and how, uh, if I ever got out, because it wasn't a guarantee that I was going to get out. And I, I actually had to uh, go through the court system in order to get released from prison. 
and I have a video on that as well. But, um, you know, if I ever got out, then how was I going to uh, not go back into prison uh, or into jail? Right. Because up to that point, I also had been uh, multiple times, you know, incarcerated as a juvenile uh, for various things. And uh, and it would appear that I just couldn't stay out of jail. And if you asked me at that time uh, what was causing me to constantly uh, be incarcerated, it was my answer would have been because the police keeps fucking with me. Right. That, that would have been my answer. The police keep fucking with me. Uh, and I believe that to the core of my being, to the core of my heart, I believe they, they would always fuck with me because whenever I would go out, I would uh, come in any have any contact with law enforcement. It would always, you know, turn into a negative situation. So I just felt that the police was always fucking with me. But then what I had to look at was my attitude. Right. In these encounters. Right. Uh, and the common denominator in all of those situations was me, was the attitude I chose to use, how I chose to conduct myself. Right. Uh, and then my attitude would be mirrored by the law enforcement. And yes, they're supposed to be professional. They're supposed to conduct themselves in a certain way and should be uh, held to a higher standard just based on their position right um however still people still humans right so uh what i decided for myself was that if i could change how i behave i could possibly uh change the outcome of my life right and so i started working on that while i was in prison and and start adjusting uh, my attitude and the way that I chose to respond towards people, right? And and I'm telling you, in the beginning, it wasn't like I was um, uh, just became suddenly became uh, this good citizen that just wanted to do the right thing. In reality, the reason why I changed was not because I was a good citizen, was because I no longer wanted to face the consequences. Right? I was seeing uh, a pattern of the consequences that I was facing for uh, the things that I chose to do, and it was getting increasingly worse, right? So I said, okay, if I don't want to face the consequences, then I'm going to change the behavior. And I felt that if I could do that, then things would change for me. And so I started changing those things. I started, uh, as I mentioned, uh, educating myself while I was in prison. I started assisting other people in educating themselves. I started um, trying to reframe my interpretation of what somebody said or did or, 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 or um, uh, you know, how I would look at the situation and this help. Right. And in the beginning, when I changed again, was looking at, at, at changing my interpretation or trying to look at it from a different angle. It wasn't like I wasn't still angry that I didn't still have that that extreme anger inside of me and want to act out aggressively as I always had done. Right. I just chose to conduct myself with different behavior. Right. It wasn't like those feelings weren't still there. And and I'll even say that, I, you know, I even have some times now where I will still feel a certain way. But again, I still choose how I act and making better decisions have given me a better outcome. Right. So uh, for us in the in the in the community, right, we have all of these different opportunities and we also have choices. Right. Of how we uh, choose to conduct ourselves, what we choose to prioritize in our life. And for many of us. Um, as far as I can tell, the reason why we're not successful in life is due to the decisions that we have made, right? We, we put priorities on the wrong things, right? Um, uh, we will, uh, for example, we will have an individual that will not have a place to stay, 
you know, I mean, technically they'll have a place to stay because they're uh, living with their parents, right? Which I don't see anything wrong with living with your parents. Um, I actually would live with my parents if I could. I would actually help them pay the rent or pay the rent for them. But, uh, but a lot of these individuals are not just living with their parents. They're living off their parents as grown men, as grown men living off their parents, right? Their parents paying all the, uh, for all the bills and they're driving around with, uh, uh, let's say a car that maybe the body of the car worth maybe a couple thousand dollars and they got some $10,000 rims on the car or, a you know, a five, $6,000 paint job. And, and, and in a lot of cases don't even have a job, right? Don't even have, don't even have a job, not even bringing in income. Right. But, you know, you got all these fancy things on your car or you want to wear the most fancy clothes or get the latest phone, thousand dollar phones. Uh, and the phone I'm recording on, you know, it's actually a thousand dollar phone. I didn't pay a thousand dollars for it. It was free as part of the uh, account. However, you know, getting a thousand dollar phone every year. Right. And I say, look, if you can afford it, there's nothing wrong with having nice things. However, priorities. Right. So if I don't if I'm not paying rent or a mortgage, right, I don't have a, a stable place to stay. You know, what am I doing um, spending money on? You know, all the fancy stuff. Right. Again, nothing wrong with having it. But. Why wouldn't I invest in myself? Why wouldn't I invest in my future? Right. That's what other that's what people do. Right. Uh, some of us that that maintain this victim mentality will even look at people like, uh, let's say, immigrants that come over to this country. Right. And uh, and and then we will look at them and and hate them because they succeed. Right. And we'll make statements. Right. I've heard, you know, I've heard numerous people. I can't tell how many people I've heard say, uh, well, the government. They just give everything to the immigrants and, 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 and give them everything and give them business loans and, and, and just take care of them and they get all the benefits. But we as citizens, we can't get anything. And especially, um, we start talking about, uh, blacks in particular, you know, they won't even give a black man a business loan and this and that, right. And help him out so he can start a business. And, but they give it all to these people that ain't even from this country and stuff like that. Right. Now, that's absolute bullshit, right? That's absolute bullshit. The difference between a lot of us and those immigrants is that those immigrants are willing to sacrifice, right? You'll have sometimes people come over and you might have 10 people living in one home, one house or one apartment or whatever, right? So those 10 people and they're all fucking working, right? They're working, making a living, earning a living for themselves. And they're willing to share the cost of living in this place. Is it uncomfortable? Absolutely. Right. Very uncomfortable. But they're willing to sacrifice because they're paying that one rent or that one mortgage and the rest of their money. They're able to pool and start legitimate businesses. Right. Start actual businesses. And because they know that if they wait and they sacrifice now. It's going to be greater later as the cliche that a lot of us like to use goes, right? It's going to be greater later if they invest in themselves. But we choose not to invest in ourselves. We choose to, again, prioritize how we look or what the things that we have, right? Um, you know, like we, a lot of us, we look at these these uh, different videos and people are, you know, running pranks and trying to catch the so-called gold digger and and, and, and everybody else caught up in worrying about what the other person has as far as how good their car look and what kind of phone they have and how much jewelry they got on and whether their jewelry is real or fake and, and all this crap. Right. None of that matters. Right. Or it shouldn't. Right. Especially if. Again, you don't even have a stable place to stay. You don't even have a stable career. And I'm not just talking about just a job, right? You, you know, a lot of us, you know, even especially those of us that get out of prison, we get out, we get this get well job and we stay with the same job, no matter how toxic it is, no matter uh, the fact that 
It's not even making ends meet, right? We stay in the same toxic job and we day in and day out, we complain about it. We complain how much we hate it, uh, how bad our boss is, how we're not making enough money, but we don't actually do anything about it in order to improve our conditions in life, right? So we just keep on and, and we just argue. And we complain about our condition without making any effort to change anything. And I know some people are like, well, what are we supposed to do with all the, you know, the systemic racism and, and discrimination and all these things? And I say, don't worry about those things, right? Worry about them, but don't worry about them. I'm not telling you not to stand against it, right? But what I am telling you is that they don't matter as it relates to you being successful, right? Anybody, right? So let's say you're poor, right? You don't really have money. Your family don't have money. You don't have money. Uh, so that's not going to prevent you from going to school and getting an education. Basically, public schools are free, right? And you can go and you can educate yourself. I know it's not under the best conditions, right? But even when we talk about those conditions, a lot of us, and I was one of them, cause those conditions to be what they are, right? When we start talking about the conditions of our neighborhood, right? It ain't the man, some mysterious man or the government coming over, messing up our neighborhoods, right? Or, you know, we look at some of the poor communities and you see garbage and trash and stuff just spread all around. Right. Abandoned uh, cars or bicycles and and it just looks horrible. Right. And we live under these conditions. Right. And then we you know, we get out there and or maybe we're talking to the media and we go show them how the government is not taking care of us. But guess what? The government don't live in those communities. And I know some people say, well, they don't care about us. And <laughs> you're probably right. They don't. Right. But that's not their job to care about you. They don't have to care about you. You need to care about you. We need to care about us. Right. And in the process of us caring about ourselves, we begin to do certain things to improve our own conditions. Right. So as I was saying with the school, you don't have money. Right. Let's say you want to go to college. When I was a kid, uh, the thought of college. Um, in my mind, I thought it was like rich folk shit. I'm like, yeah, that's like rich folk shit. It was not even on my radar that I would ever uh, attend college. I mean, especially at that time, because I didn't even <laughs> want to go to school for free. I damn sure wasn't going to pay for it. Right. So, uh, you know, it wasn't even on my radar that I was going to go to college. But then, you know, it takes me getting a life sentence, serving a life sentence in prison to begin to see all the opportunities that were always available to me. So if you don't have money and you want to go to college, there are grants available to you for you, right? To help you to get into college. Um, uh, you end up not paying anything, right? I mean, literally get, uh, especially community college free and not just free. You even have some money left over so you can get some things for yourself, right? Uh, if you choose to go that route, if you choose to uh, go that route and educate yourself, right? There are scholarships that's available for minority members or people who have uh, been incarcerated. Um, all of the excuses, and that's what I'm calling them, excuses that we choose to use as to why we're not successful in life. There are plans and programs to help us so that we can succeed if we choose to take advantage of those resources, right? When I talk to some of my clients, right? And I work with, uh, I work mainly with uh, people who have been incarcerated, people with criminal histories like me, right? People who have um, uh, served a lot of prison time, who maybe had a lot of problems as a juvenile with the juvenile justice system and such, such as, you know, I have as well, right? 
And, you know, these are the type of clients that I, that I deal with. And one of the things that I tell them, right, because a lot of people, the big catch word of the day, uh, we like to talk about privilege, right? Privilege. Who's privileged and all this, right? And I say we are, right? We are, right? Whether we say uh, as minority members or we say as uh, felons, ex-cons, or as Americans in general, we are privileged, right? So, and when I have this discussion, I don't just make that statement without saying something or qualifying it with something, right? So whenever we go to, uh, let's say a PAC meeting, right? They have a, a, what they call a PAC meeting where parolees, you know, when they get out, they're probably, you know, uh, require them to go to at least one PAC meeting. At these PAC meetings, you will have numerous providers that will come in to let the uh, formerly incarcerated or the parolees know um, the resources that are available to them as formerly incarcerated individuals, right? And these resources, a lot of them that they're talking about are only available to them. And these are good resources. I'm talking about things to help them uh, uh, get into college and not only get into to, to colleges, but good colleges, even find housing while they're going to college and pay for it. Pay for it for them, right? So the only thing that they have to worry about is their education. And in some cases, they even get a, a, a small stipend to help them for food and necessities, right? Uh, and it's only available to them as formerly incarcerated, right? I say that's a privilege, right? There are certain scholarships that are available to us as um, minority members. Right. And as it relates to school, certain so-called uh, so-called disenfranchised individuals. Right. That are available to us. Right. And only to us, not available for other people. Right. That is a privilege. Um, and I know some people say, oh, we deserve it because of this and because of that and our history and slavery and all these other things. Right. And. uh so all those things are, are, are true, right? All those things happen, historical factors. They happen for sure. And they were terrible. And, and many people mentally are still impacted by those things, right? But I say we can choose to not be physically or mentally or economically impacted by things that happen in history, right? And some people will say, well, you still have racism and it's still going on. And I agree. You still do have it and it still is going on. And probably it will never go away, right? It will go on forever. But what am I going to do? Am I going to just give up and, and, and not do anything for myself because there happens to be racists in the world and some people don't want me to succeed. I choose to go the other route, right? And I don't remember exactly where the statement come, and I'm not going to uh, look it up right now. But, you know, there's a, a statement to the effect uh, that the ultimate revenge is tremendous success. And that might not be the exact quote, but some of you, I'm sure you'll understand what I'm, what I'm saying, or you can Google it, right? So. The last thing that somebody who hates you or let's say intentionally that's trying to make you fail want to see is you succeed. Right. And you can choose to succeed. It's going to take some work. Right. Ain't nobody going to give you shit. Right. Many of us, that's what we're waiting on, waiting for somebody to give us something. Right. Uh, but they owe us. Right. Whether they owe us or don't owe us. I don't know. It's not the purpose of this video right now. But what I'm saying is for all the years that you've been saying that they owe you, how much have they actually given you? Not a goddamn thing. Therefore, right, stop begging, right, and start acting, right, and not acting in a way that's going to put you in prison, right? Invest in yourself, right? Choose to go to school. Choose to educate yourself. Choose to help another individual. 
And that's another thing, right? I was using the example of the immigrants and how they choose to pull their money and work together and uh, start legitimate businesses. A lot of us that complain about, let's say, them being able to succeed or anybody else being able to succeed, one of the things that we're unwilling to do is work together. We're unwilling to, to, to help each other out, right? Whether financially or even with information, right? I know everybody is not able to, to uh, necessarily financially be there for the whole community, right? I'm not able to do that, right? But we can share. We can share information. If we learn something new, we can uh, disclose that information to people who may need it, right? And we can network. We can have people that learn. Let's say even if you uh, have ideas for business, right? You can have people that are maybe specializing in a particular area of economics and somebody else specializing in, in some other area, right? And then from time to time, you kind of come together and and uh, meeting other minds and share uh, what you've learned, right? So that you can help each other to grow. But we won't do that, right? We'll sit there and we'll complain about what we don't have and who's not giving us something. Uh, but we won't do the things necessary uh, to help us to succeed, right? And these things are available to us, right? I'm not talking about something in theory, right? So even if you go, so let's say you go to the Small Business Administration, it's a federal agency, right? And I got my uh, issues with them too, right? Maybe I'll make a video about that. However, right, if you look on their website and you look at, you look up, let's say, uh, uh, things for like small business loans, right? There are special categories for Let's say women-owned businesses, minority-owned businesses, uh, veteran-owned businesses, you know, disenfranchised individuals, whatever, where they have special <coughs> loans to help people that fit in these categories. Now, am I saying it like that's a problem? No. Hey, <laughs> you know, I'm saying it because the resources are there. That's my point, right? The resources are there. I'm glad that they're there, right? Some of the, the uh, let's say, special programs that they make that are specifically geared to help the so-called disenfranchised individuals, right? Uh, some people consider them not to be fair, and they may not be, right? Uh, however, I don't complain against them. That's not my point of this as to, Talk against those things, but I'm saying that they are there. Use them, right? Use them to your advantage. Use them uh, to help you to be successful. Stop waiting for somebody to give you something. Stop counting on other people to do stuff for you. Even if it's, the, even if you think it's their duty, you might say, "Hey, you know what? Uh, this person is supposed to." Uh, do these things for me because let's say maybe their job position or them as a politician and whatever, right? Uh, but they're not doing it, right? Again, how long have you been asking them, right? How long have you been talking about, uh, let's say, reparations and all these other things, right? If they come, cool, right? But I'm not going to sit here and, and count on something like uh, reparations, right? That's like me counting on the lottery. I play that shit too, right? Got some scratchers right here in my little desk drawer in front of me, <laughs> right? But I'm not going to stop working because I'm going to hit the lottery, right? And that's what we do. doing. Like when we uh, spend more time whining about what someone is not giving us or, or saying we're going to make somebody give us something, that would be like me just counting on hitting the lottery. It may happen, right? I think it could. That's why I play. Wouldn't play it if I didn't think it could happen. However, um, Likelihood, <laughs> very low, right? Uh, so I'm going to work. I'm going to do things that I believe that's going to put me in position to be successful uh, in my life. And it's going to take some work, right? Uh, and I've, I've, I've noticed this since getting out of prison, right? I got out in uh, 2010 originally, 
right? I was out for 13 months and then I was uh, briefly uh, reincarcerated because I got out through the courts. And uh, there was a United States Supreme Court decision that came down that overturned my situation. Anyway, I have a video on that. But uh, since getting out, what I have noticed is that my level of success and the things that I've been able to accomplish for myself has been directly uh, related to the decisions and the effort that I have put into it. The, the effort that I've put into it has, um, has determined where I'm at now. Now, am I as far along as I would like to be? Am I, let's say financially, where I would like to be? <laughs> Not even close, right? Are all the things that I would like to see, let's say business-wise, um, are they happening right now in my life? Um, nope, right? But then when I look at why, it is directly associated with the effort that I'm putting in it, right? I spend more time bullshitting than I do uh, putting effort into what I want out of life, right? And I'm honest with myself about that. And the reason why I'm honest with myself about it is because I can't begin to change what I need to change about myself unless I'm able to admit and accept what my issues are. And again, I talk about my issues, right? And it's not about me trying to let anybody off the hook, the government or anybody else, right? I'm not, I don't let anybody off the hook. However, I'm not going to let myself off the hook either. And, and, and I especially not going to let myself off the hook because that's the only person I can actually change, right? I can't change anybody else. I can't change anybody's intentions. I can't stop racist people from being racist. I can't stop people from hating me or any of that, right? But I can change my behavior and I can choose to do things that are uh, likely to help me to be successful in life. And that's what I choose to do, right? And I do that by uh, making making decisions different than I did when I was when I was young, right? Uh, and there's a, there's a lot there's a a lot to be said about this victim mind state. I didn't even really uh, touch on uh, many of the things that I actually uh, would like to touch on. However, uh, this is uh, somewhat you know long video so i'm gonna break it um here and then uh i will share a, a another video uh, continuing from where we left off here